few years ago on my birthday, I drove across town to do a favor for a friend. On my way back to the shop, I saw this chair sitting at curbside and I laughed. This is one of my very early pieces. I did this in the fall of 76 when I had just a little over a year experience. I drove by, got a couple blocks away and I thought, no, I gotta go back and get it. By outward appearance, it looks as if I did a pretty decent job. These flocked velvets were quite the thing back in 76. The fabrics held up quite well. Most of the problems are in the structure, worn swivel and broken spring. Well, that swivel certainly shot. It's been welded on. I'm going to replace these springs. Or probably serviceable but they're rusted and I want to freshen this chair up. It appears these corner blocks might have been overlooked in assembly in the factory. They just had these small staples holding it in place. A little glue on there and staple it the way it should be. Looks like 23 inch spring on the back. These front two, 24 and a half. And I'll try to gradually step them down as I do these center rows. Oftentimes these curves don't line up with an exact measurement. You have to get them just as close as possible. Let's see how this 24 and a half works out. All right, it falls right on the curve. I need to pull this frame together. The uh, self-tapping deck screws work great, but in hardwood I still like to drill pilot holes and countersink. I learned this trick from Chet Smith, who was the service man for our local Cheney Furniture Company for many years. Take off about three feet of uh, spring tying cord, lock it in, and you can get a grip on this and pull it in place much easier. This wire edge is worn beyond use, so I'm going to replace it with a piece of paper covered steak wire. I'll hog ring it in place and then add deck pad over it.
Well, I'll tell you, Bucky didn't leave much of an original pattern to go by, so I'm going to have to wing it on my own. One inch thick polyfoam top stitched into the cover and stapled firm into the frame isn't going to work. I'll put down three layers of cotton and fill in this void right here. Alright, that should finish out pretty good. When it came time to pick fabric for this chair, I wanted something classy and durable, so I went straight to Greenhouse and their Krypton fabrics. 100% polyester, durable. I'm giving this chair to my son-in-law, Brandon, the guy that does the fantastic editing and gets my YouTube channel put together. There's three young boys in the house, so this chair is going to get some hard use. I started my seat cover with a half inch thickness of HR50 foam. I've got it backed with some ticking. The fabric I used on the back is a bit overkill, but uh, it's what I had on the shelf. I measured the distance across the chair and I came up inch and three quarters for each channel. I'll spray on a light coat of adhesive to both surfaces. I've put in a heavy 23 gauge needle to help reduce the thread from binding into the adhesive and I've gone to the largest stitch size on my machine. Got my side panels in place, pull strips added. This channeling tends to draw the cover together, and I'd mentioned this ticking being an overkill. Where this cover fits across the frame, I'm going to split that ticking and allow the cover to stretch just a little easier. We'll add some cotton to this front edge and tighten up this loose pocket in the front. Pull this down and finish out shaping the front. When laying out materials for arm facings, it's best to work with a cardboard template. I missed some important detail in 46 years ago on this arm panel. I'll use pattern board to lay out reference lines for my back cover. I'll get it positioned here square on the frame at the bottom. Line up the side. I use my scribe to match up the distance between the bottom of the rail to the bottom of my cardboard template 
and then I'll draw in this curve. With the bottom curve of the template cut, I've stapled it back in place, lined up the cut along the arms here, and made a reference for the arm top. Stop short with this cut. Stretch that back into place. Okay, that'll get covered up all right. I'll cap these arms with half inch deck padding. I'll fold over a full layer of cotton batting to finish padding out the top. I'm allowing a little bit hanging out over the front so that I can tuck this back and even out the front edge. I'll feather away the excess cotton along this opening. I'll tuck under some cushion ease, fold this over, and just shoot a few staples in here to hold this edge. Roll back the cushion knees and pull this cotton ahead just right to where it breaks across the front edge here. And I'll staple it in place along the tack strip. As I'm rolling back the cover, I'm using my regulator to push the cotton tight in against this cording. I'll draw this back snug and start lining up the weave in the fabric. As I'm wrapping the arm, I make sure that I keep the cotton padding pushed up on the edge of the frame. Follow the weave in the fabric down the line.
I dropped over a layer of cushionese. I'll line this up across the bottom. I'll staple it in place along this tack strip. This excess cushion needs will get in the way when I'm finishing out the bottom edge, so I'm going to trim away the excess. Again, I'll use my regulator to push the cotton up tight against the cording. As I'm pulling down this front edge, I'm keeping the cotton on the face of the frame. I'm pulling the fabric down and keeping the weave in line with the uh, profile line. I laid out the cardboard template over this fabric I cut back in 1976 and I'd say Bucky did a pretty good job with the layout. I only need to make a little bit of changes along these edges. I need to extend this channel out two inches. Bring this on around. I'll fold this over and book match it to the other side. Put in my pull strip reference mark. I'll fit two layers of cotton to the inside of the frame, then I'll add a third layer over the entire face.
because of the way this cover turns around the corner and gets broader in the back, I need to add a series of pleats in my pull strip around the corners. I'll line up my channels and push this through. I started by stapling this bottom pull strip evenly across the back. I pulled the cover over the top. It's very important that these be kept straight in line with the frame. As I've pulled down the cover, I've measured from the arm front and kept my cording placement the same on both arms. Out of the factory, this chair would have been closed up with fabric on the outsides and this just left an open cavity. I like to lay in some burlap and, and lightly pad the sides. I'll reattach this little flap on the back. There's a steel wire in there to weight it down.
Driving a wedge in these springs make them a lot easier to get screwed onto the frame. I'll use thread lock to make sure these bolts don't work loose. Far out, that's a wrap on this project.